we are working our way around this triangle and hopefully from the previous session you've now done some work in knowing the demands so you've unpacked the maths or numeracy demands of a, of a task that you're asking your students to complete. So it seems very logical now to change focus and to ask a second question. Well, what are the existing skills of my learners? Are they at the correct level in order to cope with the demands of the task that I'm actually asking them to do? So I now need some formative assessments or some diagnostics in order to fully inform me about the existing skills that my uh, that my learners have um, so that I can move away from just a sort of an assumption about the level of, of numeracy skills that they have into actually some uh, real facts about what they can do and what they can't do. This will be very useful to then use to help me understand what sort of steps I might take or, or what sort of steps the learners need in order to be able to move towards being able to cope with the demands of the task that I'm setting them. I think there is an opportunity here though to find out both something about the general attitude of your learners to mathematics and the history of your learners to mathematics and then alongside that to find out uh, the skill level that your learners have in relation to the task skills which you are going to be asking them to complete. In the very first week of many courses, learners are asked to complete the ALNET um, assessments. Uh, this is the Adult Literacy and Numeracy Assessment Tool. And the results of this uh, should be available to you as a tutor on the course and give a very um, comprehensive picture of literacy and numeracy skills of your learners. The LNET tool is aligned to using the learning progressions that we used um, with the mapping of the demands of, of, of a task. This slide shows the results of a, a large learner group. And at the end of them all doing the, uh, the questions, uh, their step level is, has been assessed. And this uh, bar chart shows uh, how many of the students were um, at step two and then step three and then step four, etc., etc. So the majority of this um, learner group, the learners were um, in numeracy at step four and step five, and then we've got a few on either side of those two step levels. So obviously at this stage, you can immediately then start to think about, well, where is the, the task? When I unpack the demands of the task, was that at step six or was that at step five or was that at step four? And just by a glance at this particular table, uh, you will have an idea of how many of your learners will be able to cope easily or, in, or indeed with great difficulty with the step level of the, the task that you're asking them to do. This is a summary sheet for a student having completed the numeracy questions on the LNET. When a correct answer was obtained, this is shown by the coloured in number circle. And the next question um, is adapted to be a slightly higher level of difficulty or complexity. If an incorrect answer is given, then the, shown by the white circles, then the next question asked is at a lower level of complexity or difficulty. The questions go uh, right across both the number and the measurement progressions. This student having done all the question is then uh, summarized as being a overall a step three 
student and this this is recorded in the bar at the top of the summary sheet there is a lot more information um, available on the system about each individual question but i think really uh, this the main thing is to to try to get a a, a overall understanding of the level of numeracy skills that an individual learner um, currently has. So in our last slide, the learner came out as being a step three learner. Now, what does that actually mean? I would, I think at this point, just um, ask you to, to again, to refer to the Centre for Literacy and Numeracy website. On there, you will find some what's known as the capability profiles, which will give you an indication of what a student is likely to be able to do at each of the step levels. So with the ALNET results, you're already quite well informed about the skill levels of, of your, your students, both individually and as a class. There are many other formative assessments which you, you could use. And I would encourage you actually to use something a little bit different. Uh, to, we really don't want to, to be giving students, you know, uh, paper-based 50 questions to find out what, what they can't do. It's very, would be very disheartening for students to receive something like that. So I'd encourage you to try something else. Uh, and here's a list on this particular slide of different things that you might use. And what you need to be able to do is use a couple of these uh, in order to find out about people's general attitude and history connected with mathematics, and then also to home in on some of the specific skills which you know your learners are, are going to need in order to be able to complete successfully the tasks which you're going to be setting them. I think it is useful to particularly mention the use of a, a spiky um, graph. Here's an example of one. And this is a very quick and easy uh, formative assessment to use. Along the top, you can also vary what you place along the top and, and even put down very specific skills which are relating to uh, the task which you're going to be setting. You may need a little bit more information on how to effectively use some of these formative uh, assessments within the classroom and please do get in contact with the teacher training team um, to give you further guidance if, if necessary. So along with using a couple of these formative assessments and the LNET scores, then you should get to a position of being quite well informed about the existing level of numeracy or maths, maths that your learners have, and also of how they might or indeed might not be able to cope with some of the numeracy demands of the task which you're going to be setting. So at this stage, we've covered two of the three corners of our triangle. We started off by looking at the, the numeracy demands of a particular task and using the learning progressions in order to unpack and to understand the demands of that task. Secondly, we've now focused on the learner and through ALNET and using other formative assessments, we should have a clear picture about what level the learner is actually working at and is able to work at. And I think you're going to find that for many of our learners, there's going to be a gap now. There's going to be a clear gap between where the learners are and the, the demand to what you're asking them to do. And so we will then need to go to the third corner of our triangle. And it's the all important one really is then knowing what to do.